Welcome to the Investor News. In this video, Garrett Goggin, the editor of the Silver Stock Analyst, talks about outside assets like Bitcoin, silver, and gold. Yeah, well, people look at the war and they look at fear and they associate it with precious metals, but it goes beyond that because, you know, the U.S. imposed sanctions upon Russia. Um, they kicked them out of the SWIFT system. Um, they basically seized all like about $600 billion of their uh, U.S. assets and treasury bonds, their, their current account surplus, and basically locked them out of the U.S. Uh, dollar denominated system. And then Russia, in response, said, hey, if you're going to lock us out of the system, we're going to do business with China and Juan. We're going to accept gold and, and um, crypto for our natural gas and oil, and we're not going to accept dollars anymore. So what's going on is, um, you know, the U.S., uh, they weaponized um, their monetary system, you know, against um, people, against countries that are, you know, anti-U.S. And, you know, it's extremely effective, but it's causing, um, you know, people to, to leave the U.S. currency uh, system faster, at a faster rate than, than ever before. Um, and, you know, the, the dollar's been run on the, you know, petrodollar, where they're, you know, selling uh, oil for dollars and they're recycling the dollars back in uh, into treasuries. And, you know, these countries, uh, China, Russia, um, India, you know, they're not doing that as, um, as much anymore. And there's less support for the dollar and the dollar is going to lose value. And instead of investing in a system that they could be potentially locked out of, which they have been, they're buying inside, they're buying um, outside assets, they're buying Bitcoin, they're buying silver, they're buying gold, they're buying commodities. Uh, these are things that, you know, are no one else's liability. The inside system, um, you know, your cash in a bank is the bank's liability. You know, it's Those assets are a liability of something else. And, you know, like in the case of the Canadian truckers, right? If you if you sympathize with them and you gave them it made a $20 donation, your bank accounts could potentially be shut. You might have lost your insurance. You know, that is the inside system. So people are choosing, you know, to go outside with their assets. And we're talking about trillions and trillions of dollars here. China has, uh, you know, about $3 trillion that they're going to look to diversify into um, outside assets. And we think that, you know, gold and silver and Bitcoin are, you know, going to go through the roof. You know, one of the editors that works for Stansbury, he's based in, um, you know, Kiev in the Ukraine. And, um, you know, the Russian forces came in, they had a mad rush to the bank, they needed to get out of the city, the banks were closed, and even if the ATMs were open, they only could get about $30 worth of stuff. Uh, of currency, uh, he held Bitcoin. He held gold. Um, he was able to convert some of his Bitcoin, you know, into you know, I, I think the the Polish currency, and he was able to convert um, some of the gold into currency. And you know, that was his lifeline. Those are outside assets. So even if the system goes down, um, you know, these assets you own, and you're you, you're going to be able to uh, transact in them and convert it into currencies. So you know, I've been speaking to a lot of my my friends um, who run bullion dealers, telling me that. You know, sales have been soaring for, for gold and silver. What are you hearing the same from the people you speak with? Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt. There's big premiums for silver coins on the market. Uh, they're, just, you know, being snatched up. Um, and then, you know, you watch the inventory data on COMEX and the inventory, the registered inventory keeps decreasing further and further and further. But, you know, it's not it's not a cataclysmic situation. It's not like we're going to be transacting in gold and silver and Bitcoin and that's it. It's just a matter of, you know, when the people choose outside assets over the U.S. dollar inside asset system, the dollar is going to continue losing value. Inflation is going to keep rising. So that 100000 you have in the bank is only going to buy you know, $50,000 worth of stuff in a couple of years from now. So that that's where we're really going to see it. So yeah, I think it's extremely wise for, you know, investors to choose, you know, diversify into some outside assets outside the system because of inflation and loss of purchasing power. I work with John Duty, who's editor of the Gold Stock Analyst. And yeah, John is looking for 3000 gold this year. You know, silver is interesting. Silver is really volatile. Silver is gold on steroids. Silver trails gold it basically uh, it lags gold like 85 90 percent of the time but when it decides to move 
it goes to the moon. Um, so it's extremely volatile on the upside. You know, it happened in 1980, it happened in 2011. I follow a regression model that shows silver is about 30% undervalued versus gold here. It should be traded near about $30 an ounce. But when you get these upside moves in gold, silver explodes to you know 100%, 200% higher than what the regression would predict, and it just and the silver stocks are even more leveraged because uh, they're leveraged to the underlying price of silver. Their free cash flow explodes. Their stocks, you know, one of the companies that I follow uh, during when silver did well, it went up 600% in a, in a span of six months. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. You do prefer the miners over physical silver. Uh, you, you mentioned one of the reasons, but like why overall? Well, overall would you not have a mix of both yeah, physical sure. and miners or you yeah sure you can miners? definitely have a mix of both you know silver is outside money but you know the miners it just offers you leverage silver is leveraged to gold the miners are leveraged to silver the um silver minor equities are basically double leveraged um you know to the price of silver and you know, I, I cover about 35 silver producers and actually I was just exchanging a couple of tweets with some of the editors and uh, you got to watch out for a lot of these um, silver producers because they're not profitable. All they do is they dilute, they keep selling shares year after year. The shareholder shareholders are diluted and the share price goes down. One of the top silver stocks, when people think of silver, you think of core mining. Core mining was trading at over $300 a share um, back in the late 90s, trades at about four dollars per share now it's down 85 90 percent it's because of dilution it's because of bad deals but there are good um companies and good management in the silver sector and i've been covering the sector for 10 years i know the good ones i know the bad ones in the my favorite five companies two of them are going to be going into production this year um they're kicking up their yeah. mills right now they're the highest grade deposits in the world it's amazing one of the companies only has six employees it's going to trade that a royalty multiple um it's just you know the, the good ones offer a tremendous amount of opportunity and, and and given the current silver price i mean we should be seeing more good news from the, the miners emerge right yeah you know the margins are a little bit higher the silver miners are a little bit healthier they've got cash in the bank that and then you know the whole thing is profits and free cash flow and if a company's gushing in profits and free cash flow uh you know they do good things with their money generally they can pay higher dividends they can buy shares back they make um accretive acquisitions you know and the silver miners are entering that sort of um yeah stage do you prefer uh investing in the individual silver miners over an etf and if so why <laughs> Yeah, uh, there is a silver stock ETF that that I basically benchmark against, and um, that is the SIL. The um, it's like a silver miners ETF. That you look at the constituents of that. You know, it's core mining, it's Korea Zinc. They got some other stuff. Um, the at the, the silver stock analyst Day Five. Um, is up over 250% over the past five years, that silver ETF hasn't done anything. You know, I've just, you know, the Fave 5 crushes that silver miner ETF. The last time we spoke, there was so much momentum behind the silver squeeze, squeezing yeah. the silver market. Uh, where are we at with uh, that now? I know you speak uh, to the Wall Street silver guys often. Yep. Um, is that a, a movement that's died or you think will be revived? Is no, that a no. pause? Where are yeah, we at? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I go to that website often. Um, there's silver stackers. There's people that pr prefer outside outside money. And, you know, a lot of people, they talk about crypto versus gold, crypto versus silver. It, it's all one battle. We're all on the same team. It, it's the same mindset. People choose Bitcoin because they want something of a limited quantity. People choose gold and silver because it's a store of value in limited quantity. We're fighting the same battle. One interesting thing that I wanted to uh, bring up, there's a gold token, PaxG. That PaxG, it's a, it's a crypto token, right? It entitles you to an ounce of gold. You can have that token. You can stake it at some of the, um, the yield providers and get a 5.5% yield. That Pax G, their assets have gone from 100 mil to like 600, 700, 800 mil over the past six months. So you're getting real money in here. And I see gold and crypto and silver working together to kind of to uh, create that outside system that, where they're not as dependent upon.
on the traditional banking system. So, and it keeps growing. And, you know, you look at crypto and you're like, um, you know, it seems a little wacky. It's, you know, I don't know if I trust it, but you know what? It's not about trust in the crypto. It's about the lack of trust in the U.S. government that they're going to keep on spending yeah. trillions and trillions of dollars and inflation is going to be a tremendous problem and they're not going to change their ways. So that's the thing that's going to be um consistent and so therefore crypto is going to keep going gold is going to keep going silver is going to keep going and the dollar is going to keep losing its value do you want to know one thing about crypto i made over three thousand percent in profit in a few weeks fact is the traditional financial system the traditional money system makes you poor not rich if you want to earn five hundred thousand one million dollar you have to wait until you're 50 60 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, Here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.